And I now welcome uh, Pierre Bellichard from Antorum, um, after so rudely sending him back to his chair earlier, who's the first of our industry speakers. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Antorum is a very good example of collaboration between uh, academics. Uh, we uh, are developing this uh, new company on the basis of INRA's Metagenomic uh, platform. Uh, the other part of the collaboration is definitely a management that came from the industry and uh, money coming from uh, venture capital. So uh, I would say that it's the phase two uh, of the development of um, research on the microbiome, uh, which is today uh, in movement. And Anterum is definitely dedicated to become a stratified medicine company, which will be dedicated to identify biomarkers in metagenomic signatures translate them into uh, diagnostic tools. And as I told you before, the management of the company, I'm the CEO, uh, is the, a blend of uh, pharma industry executive and biomarker specialist. So the reason why uh, we decided to set up this new company is not only because I met with Dushko and I was so much interested by this, uh, what he was doing, but also because we've been very early on convinced by the meta uh, protocol and experiments and clinical trials that the gut microbiota composition had a unique disease phenotype stratification potential. And based on that, we have decided to focus this company on biomarkers that will have a clinical utility. Uh, by saying that, we see the metagenomic signature as a powerful imaging tool to study the anatomy of what is called this uh, forgotten organ, the, the gut microbiota. And we have decided to develop biomarkers that will be translated into marketed uh, diagnostics with clinical utility. And we're going to use these biomarkers for three reasons, for three means. The first one being to stratify patients according to their bacterial gut composition and the risk which is associated to develop a, a given disease. And this is more, uh, you know, evident for a metabolic disease. And we are today developing uh, products. Uh, for the, 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 the identification of patients at risk for developing uh, NAFL, NASH, or type 2 diabetes or obesity. The second use of uh, those biomarkers will be to monitor on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the physician will decide how they're going to use this uh, biomarker for uh, the monitoring of evolutive disease of the gut, like IBD, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. The third use of the biomarkers that we are currently developing is to improve the patient screening in the development of drugs, uh, because today most of the company developing drugs with uh, interesting mode of action are faced with the difficulty of screening the right patients that are going to evolve towards the most severe form of disease. Uh, and it will be uh, a good way to improve the, the, the efficacy uh, of developing drugs. Uh, but Developing biomarkers is definitely a new business model, and I will try to convince you today uh, that it's a bit different from uh, what was the, the traditional development for uh, diagnostics. There, there is only a few biomarkers on the market today uh, that are developed with IP, uh, with a full clinical development, uh, because it's a very costful type of development with high regulatory hurdles. And uh, of course, in exchange of uh, this um, uh, development, the pricing and the reimbursement of the new biomarkers will be high compared with the traditional uh, diagnostics where uh, the, the pricing was very low and the, the end up customer being the lab, of course, uh, whereas for the, the new biomarkers, uh, the customer will be the physician. So it's a bit like uh, you understood from the, the beginning, it's a bit like developing a drug and the, the difference between a generic and a branded product, difference between a commodity and an innovation product, the difference between making money on market share uh, bet uh, and making money on, on margin, uh, which is due to innovation, uh, which is based on, on this. But the demonstration of clinical utility as a cost, uh, today, th this is on, on this slide depicted uh, the way you have to develop today a biomarker to bring it to the market and to get reimbursement. You first have to do uh, discovery of the signature, uh, in our case of a metagenic signature. Then you have to do a technology transfer because at the, at the end of the day, uh, the, the doctor will have to prescribe a, a product uh, which is uh, something uh, that you can use and you can, you can sell and you can bring to the patient. Then we have to do an external validation and you see uh, that there is a more, uh, there is a huge number of patients in this external validation. Then 
we have to do the final clinical validation in uh, prospective studies. And in that case, it's more in the, the, the number of patients that will be required uh, for doing this type of development is more in, in the thousands of patients. And then after four years and a spending which is uh, around 20 million euros, uh, you, be, you can be able to pretend for reimbursement and uh, going onto the market. So developing this biomarker as a price, uh, but uh, this is definitely wh what we're going to do. So who will be the, the biomarkers and users, and who are there uh, today? Definitely the first one are the industry. Uh, it's helping their R&D process by uh, doing stratification of the patients. Today, in companies like Genentech, 75% uh, of the drugs uh, that, will, that have to be uh, proven to enter the clinical development have to be associated with a biomarker. And this biomarker is used for, uh, of course, stratification of the patient during the clinical development, but as well as a clinical endpoint. You, the, some of the biomarkers are used as clinical endpoints. Uh, on top of that, it's greatly helping the marketing because you can add on top of a drug, uh, which has its own IP, you can add a companion diagnostics uh, that could help in the protection and the duration of the protection of the, of the drug. And it could give you as well some exclusivity on uh, the use of a drug or the companion diagnostics and, and the two can be sold, uh, cannot be sold to uh, each other separately. Uh, last but not least, the payers are increasingly uh, liking and, and, and they love uh, biomarkers. They are putting a lot of efforts in buying, in uh, developing biomarkers because they see biomarkers as useful tools to allocate funds uh, more effectively and control the cost. Thank you.